Yes, I do have a crystal ball. And would you like for me to predict your future a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, 10, 25 years from now? I can do it with a crystal ball that I've used for a number of years. I get this question quite a bit and I have a lot of fun with this in seminars, if I'm speaking sometimes, in private consultation days, masterminds, predicting a person's future. If you give me two lists of facts, if you give me these two things, I can predict your future 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, five years, 10 years, 25 years, etc. Want to know what those two things are? First of all, give me a list. Provide me with a list of the five people, the five people that you spend the most time with every single day. Give me this list of the five people and provide me with some characteristics of those types of people. You know, are they entrepreneurs? Are they business owners? What do they do for a living? How is their physical health, their mental health? How is their marriage? Are they uh, into self-improvement? Uh, do they read books, listen to podcasts? What are the habits? What are the mindsets of these five people? As soon as I know who these five people are, that's the first, the first part that I need to predict your future. Secondly, give me a list of the books, the books, the real books that you've read in the last six months, the last 12 months, the last two years. Well, Michael, I don't read books. Well, that in itself is a list. Give me these two things, the five people that you spend the most time with, what those people are like, what their values are, what's important to them, uh, and the books that you read on a consistent basis. And I can predict your bank account. Yes, your bank account a year from now, six months from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. I can predict the marketing in your business, whether you're struggling, whether you're a, a marketing master. I can predict your marriage, your situation in your marriage. Do you have a marriage that is on fire or are you struggling? I can predict with these two indicators what about your relationship with your children, Michael? Can you predict that? I have a crystal ball for that. When I meet the five people that you spend the most time with and the books that you read and are reading. I can also predict with my crystal ball your levels of physical and mental health by the people that you hang around with and the books that you're reading. I can also predict time management. In other words, are you a person who's punctual? Are you on time? Do you have time integrity? Do you, uh, do you get things done? Do you understand and respect that time and energy is finite? I will be able to predict this by the five people you spend the most time with and by the books that you're reading. And it goes down the line to any and absolutely every area of your life, mine included. So the great Jim Rome, the late great Jim Rome, always said, he said, we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. We are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And if this is true, and it is, it's a fact, the fact of the matter is there is nothing more powerful than association. There is no vaccine for negative associates. There's no vaccine for, you know, poor minded, uh, scarcity minded, uh, toxic, cancerous friends. There's just no, uh, there's no vaccination against that. Uh, if you hang out with people that are negative, if you hang out with people 
that are small-minded, if you hang out with people that are engrossed in the news and anti-social media, if you hang out with people where fitness isn't a priority, reading isn't a priority, uh, personal development is not a priority, uh, family's not a priority, or marriage isn't a priority, then it's not going to be a priority for you. There's no, there's nothing, there's nothing as contagious as the people we associate, and that goes, that knife cuts both sides. So it can be the most powerful association in your life. The most powerful force in your life can be positive people. The five people that you spend the most time with. And here's the thing that a lot of people don't know, 99% of people don't know, is you need to elevate on purpose your level of associates. The five people. So the five people that I spend the most time with. I've hand-picked those people. I've hand-picked those people. Everybody from the closest, my secret weapon and best friend and wife, Krista, uh, to my daughter, Emery, and the other three people I've hand-picked. In other words, I don't leave anything to chance, especially, especially something as powerful as association. So I pick my friends and I unpick my friends. I curate anybody out and I have curated. I've used the Swiss sword and I've cut the rope throughout the years, multiple times, every Friday for God's sakes, to get people out of my life that no longer serve me and I don't want to be associated with. So having the five people in your life that you spend the most time with, you need to pick these people. You need to befriend great people. You need to befriend great mentors. You need to be befriend great coaches. Um, you know, it, that, it has to be something that's done on purpose, not something that just happens by accident. If you leave it to chance, chances are it won't happen. So we need to be ultra aggressive and we need to be picking the people that we associate with. And it's always the same. It doesn't matter if Chris and I are having friends over for a barbecue or we're, whatever we're doing, going to a game together. I want to spend time with other people that are achievers. I want to spend time with people that are positive. I want to spend time with people that uh, are readers. I want to spend time with people that are entrepreneurs, builders, you know, contenders, people that are always chasing the next win. These are the kind of people that I want to spend and invest time with. So I hand pick them. I hand pick them. And I befriend the people that I want in my world. And most people, 99% of people, just hang out with the people randomly that come in their life. You need to up level, up level your social circle. You need to up-level your business circle. And you always have to be on the lookout for your children to make sure that they're constantly up-leveling their social circle. Is there a person in your child's life, a friend, an associate, who is a negative or toxic influence on your son or daughter? Well, as the king of your domain, the king needs to get involved and make sure that that person is curated out of your child's life. I have a friend who actually moved from New York City to Naples, where we are here in Florida, so that he, his, his child, his daughter, had a circle of friends in New York that he was very, very um, afraid, he was very um, afraid, not afraid of, but he thought were toxic and thought were negative influences on her and he couldn't get them away so they moved they picked up their family and they literally moved here to Naples to get away and start fresh and now she has a completely different circle of friends here in Naples she's thriving in her school and they've just left that that toxic uh, group behind so yes 
you know, we're not a tree, we can move. And in certain circumstances, especially when it comes to our children, in certain circumstances, if you can't get away from something negative, we have to move. And they did. So badass move by my, uh, my friend and sometimes client doing that move from New York City to Naples. He up-leveled his environment. He up-leveled his children's environment. He up-leveled their schools. He up-leveled everything. And uh, best move he said they ever made. And it's the same for friends. We need to constantly be up-leveling our, our social circle. And it's no different than me always looking for better coaches for Emory. I'm always looking for, I'm looking to stock my bench with better tennis coaches, better chess coaches, better piano teachers, um, and just, you know, always having, looking for better, better mentors and coaches for my daughter's life. And um, it's the same for my life. It's like always looking for better leaders, better mentors, better consultants, better coaches, and just up leveling, you know, move it, just simply moving here to Naples from Canada when everything was locked down and restricted in January, we base this is basically up leveling our environment and our life. We up leveled our environment and our life. We went 400, 4,000 miles, okay, south to get into a more positive environment, to meet more positive people, to meet new people. And ever since we've been here for four months, it's amazing. Like Chris and I, we handpick our friends. You know, there's lots of great, great people around here but most remain associ they just associates, right? You say, hello, how are you, and all that stuff. But the people that I spend time with, the five people here that I spend the most time with are people that I've literally handpicked and befriended. I'm like, okay, this is a one percenter. Okay, this is a top five percenter. Okay, this is a person who's positive. This is a person who's got something going. And I, you know, that I, I do it on purpose. Ch if I leave it to chance, chances are it won't happen. So that's, that's my point there. But it all goes back to my crystal ball and, and for predicting your future is you can do a lot of things right. But if you don't get these two things right, then you're going to struggle all the time to get to that top 1%. So what books are you reading? What books are you reading? Well, Michael, I don't read books. Well, you're going to constantly struggle. You're going to constantly be behind the eight ball. And you're just going to constantly... Um, always be like the 12th man on the deal team last to know. You're never going to be cutting edge. You're never going to be mentally sharp. If you're not reading, you're one of these guys where you've destroyed your attention span, where you've been, you know, using technology for the last 25 years uh, and you've destroyed your attention span. Well, reading's the only way that you're going to get that attention span back. And that's by starting reading 10 minutes a day, then 15 minutes a day, then getting that up to 30 minutes a day, 45 minutes a day, and an hour a day. And that's the only way that's gonna happen. So that's a huge one. I read an hour a day, up to five hours a day. I call it study, because it's not reading. I'm using highlighters. I'm, I'm really studying. I'm taking my time. I'm a slow reader. But I get the question all the time is, Michael, um, how, do you, how do you read you know, 52 books a year? And I'm always amused at this question because I used to read back in the day when I first got into the personal development, when I was coaching pro hockey, I was out of university and I, I was into the Anthony Robbins stuff and the fire walks and the seminars and the conferences. And in those days, I was reading close to a book a day. So five to seven books per, um, per week. And in those days, I would just sit down and I would just be reading. If I wasn't doing something, I was reading. So now, for the last 20 years, I've been reading a book a week. And I consider that pretty flatline. I mean, basically, to read a book a week, 52 books a year, which, by the way, is a game changer. If you read a book a week, 52 books a year, you're putting yourself in a class you know, that nobody, I mean, you're just, you're going to have zero competition. I mean, zero competition. So how do you do that? Very simple. 40 pages a day is a book a week, over a book a week. And how do you read, how do you read 40 pages a week? Well, I read 40 pages in an hour. I'm a slow reader. So I set my timer every morning and I sit down with my coffee and I read for um, I read for one hour 
And in that hour, I read between 40 and 42 pages. And I didn't know if this was fast or slow. I don't really care. It's not a race to me. But what I really, really like about this is that it's a book a week. So ever since we've been here, we've been here, okay, in Naples. I'll give you an example of the power of reading for one hour a day. And you can read faster than I can. Um, we've been here for four months. So four months times four weeks, as an example. So four times four, you've got 16 weeks. So we're packing up our stuff here and shipping my, my uh, Cadillac Escalade home in the next day probably going to come and get it tomorrow we ship it home and then we charter a jet home so we fly home but my vehicle was shipped here and it was shipped back it'll be shipped back and we pack it we pack it with all of our stuff so we don't have to carry anything on the on the jet except for our bags with our clothes very light but it's interesting because I'm packing these big big cases of books today all, everything, 80% of what I brought here was books, newsletters, magazines, all my stuff I use. So we have these big plastic containers and they're just packed with books. So the books that I'm taking home, we're gonna leave some of them here because we bought a home here in Naples, so we'll, we'll be back. But what I'm taking home to the lake in Canada for the summer are more books. But I noticed that I've read over 20 books cover to cover. And that would make sense because here in Naples, I've been reading even more than normal. So I've been reading, you know, sometimes two hours a day. So I'm reading about a, a book to two books a week. So 16 weeks, I've read over 20 books and I just packed them because I was like, well, I've done pretty well. And on top of that, I'm reading news, marketing newsletters, business newsletters, fitness newsletters, all of these different things. But that's how you do it. You do it by reading 40 pages a day and 40 pages a day is probably 45 minutes to 60 minutes. It's nothing. It's a cup of coffee is what it is. And you sit down there quietly and uh, I highlight and make notes on those recipe cards and I read a book a week that way. So that's how you do that. If you're not reading and you're not spending time with outstanding people, you'd really don't have a chance to live life on your own terms you're not going to be free, you're not going to be independent, and you're certainly not going to ever achieve personal sovereignty, which to me is the ultimate goal. Doing what you want, when you want, with whom you want, on the terms you want, on the price you want. You'll never achieve personal sovereignty if you don't read great books and hang out with outstanding people. So those are the things that I'm always emphasizing, and that's why I have those tomato can cure out curate Fridays because we need to constantly be up leveling our social circle meaning our friends our associates the people we spend time with you and me are the average of the five people we spend the most time with so look at the group that you that you spend time with write their names down and then say to yourself is this the group is this the group the social circle that's going to take you're going to take your life to the next level are these the people that are going to help your business and your marketing get to a top one percent level are they top one percenters what about your physical health are these people who are you know they're going to the gym they're working they're drinking water they take care of themselves they eat clean is that what the five people are because it's all contagious right what about mental health are they reading are they meditating do they listen to podcasts uh, do they exercise? Like, are these the things? Are they, how are, because are, you're going to be the average, right? It's all so contagious. It's all so contagious. What else, uh, you know, you're, these people you're dealing with is um, um, what, you know, uh, their marriages. Are they married? Are they, have they been married for 30 years, 35 years? Do they, are they best friends with their, uh, their wife, uh, their secret weapon? Or are they divorced or separated or roommates with a ring? Like what, what's their situation there? Um, how's their relationship with their children? Like how is their relationship with their children? Um, do they have, you know, a marriage that's on fire? Do they have an amazing relationship with their own children where they're spending time uh, with their children, their teenagers, their adult children? What does all of that look like? So when you take inventory, of the five people that you do spend the most time with, then it's time to say, okay, maybe I need to up level 
And if you need to up level, well, it's uh, proactively, you have to look at it and say, who are some people that we could befriend? Who are people that I could spend more time with? Who are the people that you could introduce yourself to? Who are the people that, uh, you know, that you could recruit into your life for a better word? Like I did that in pro hockey. I used to send letters and, and uh, phone people to, 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 in, to introduce myself to these general managers and, and assistant coaches. And that's how I got my foot in the door. So it's no different in your personal or professional life. You have to recruit, you have to introduce yourself, you have to invite great people into your life, and uh, that's how it's done. So, and the last part is the books. I mean, I have, a, I have a list of 25 books. I have thousands and thousands of books, but I have a list of 25 books that I read every year. So 25 books at least one time. And then I have some new books that I bring in every year, but I'm reading a book per week. So what's to stop you from starting to read tomorrow or today for 15 minutes and get that muscle going, shut your phone off, and then just sitting down and taking inventory of the people that you hang out with. I'll tell you right now, your bank account is gonna be exactly the same as your broke ass friend. Your physical health is gonna be the same as your fat friend who drinks too much doesn't respect his body, doesn't move and sits there and watches the boob tube all day. Your, uh, your mental health is gonna be the same as you know your asshole friend who watches CNN all day and sits there and bitches and chews about the White House and about the president and about the governor and about the city he lives in and you know uh, Russia and on and on and on. If you're around that poison, well, that poison is going to be in your life as well. There's no way you can get away from association. It's one of the most powerful forces on earth. If, uh, if, you, if you're around anti-business people, you know, business people are evil or they're crooks or they're lucky or, uh, you know, this and that, then you're going to have that mindset as well. If you're knee deep in the garbage of politics, you know, the, the Trump and Biden and all this stuff and all the negativity and and just the, to the poison that comes with that trash, then you're gonna have that around you all the time. You're gonna dress like the people that you associate, you're gonna think like the people you associate, you're gonna talk like the people you associate with, and most importantly, you're gonna behave like the five people that you associate with. So time to upgrade, as my great dad, Frank McLean says, he says, if I can't five, five, he goes, he goes, if, if there's not five friends, he goes, he goes, I don't need five friends. He goes, Batman doesn't need five friends. So it's not a matter of having five. It's a matter of having all good ones and then just curating the people out of your life. You don't have to be a, a dick about it. Um, people, oh, I can't, you know, my, my family or friends or all this stuff. You know what? Do one thing. Stop spending time. Stop spending. You don't have to, you don't have to announce it. You don't have to tell the person. But you know what? Maybe you can just stop taking those phone calls or maybe you can stop encouraging them dropping into your house every day. Maybe you can get out of that, uh, that lame ass text group you're in or, or whatever that other horse shit is and start living life and doing business on your own terms. But you can certainly curate and get rid of negative people in your life without them really knowing. Just start spending almost no time with them. It's that simple. That's all you have to do. Get out of that dumb ass text group. Get out of that, you know, that coffee group or meet for coffee group or whatever the hell it is or golfing with your, uh, with your fucko friends. Like that's the kind of stuff that can be curated out. So that's it. I do have a crystal ball and I can predict your future and I predict it by the five people you spend the most time with and the books that you're reading or not reading. That's it for today, Michael McLean. Uh, like my dad says, if you can't, uh, if you can't, uh, if you can't join them, beat them. Uh, you can get a copy of my brand new book, How to Not Get Your Ass Kicked in Business and in Life. It's my 25 badass rules for living life and doing business on your own terms, not anybody else's. You can get a copy below at nobullbook.com. $20 for a hard copy book. I don't do the Go Fetch PDF or the $3 Kindle or ebook or whatever that stuff is. 
I, I write and sell real books. I'll FedEx it to you on my dime, right to your house or business. You buy the book for 20 bucks, I'll send it to you. Uh, if you're interested in uh, asking me questions or comments, there's an email address below that you can reply to that my personal assistant will get the email. I don't carry a cell phone and I don't do email only for business. So you can reply to that email and that message will get to me if it's a question or a comment. And uh, that's it for today. If you like these daily videos, you can subscribe below. I do them every single day. Today is day 171 or 172. I'm not good with this stuff. And it's just me out here with this broken iPhone 7. I don't have a camera crew. I don't have anybody helping me, it's just me. And then uh, I send this to my marketing director and he sends it to you. So if you like coming on these daily walks with me, I call them daily mini, mini adventures. I usually do them first thing in the morning when I'm walking at six o'clock, my power walk. If you like coming on these adventures, then subscribe below and I'll send you a video every, I post a video every single day. I email a video every single day. And uh, the link for my new book is below and you can subscribe. And there's also a world building coaching program below that you can apply for when it opens up to the public again in a few weeks. That's my Badass Millionaire World Building eight week program. The link is below badassmillionaire.com slash apply. That's it for today. Two words that change my life and two words that can change your life. Be relentless.